Hi, my name is uh, Mary Hanna, student at the University of Quebec in Montreal. I just finished my bachelor's degree and starting my uh, master's in the summer. So he I'm here to present you my poster, the colloidal synthesis and characterization of CUINALS2, semiconducting particles. This project is uh, supervised by uh, Professor Bonam Marsan. So, um, Basically, uh, this project is based on the synthesis of uh, the CuIs, which is uh, the copper indium sulfur sulfide, pardon, sorry. And uh, it, this material is very interesting considering uh, its uh, optical properties, uh, its good optical properties, like uh, its band gap energy of 1.5 electron mm -hmm. volts, and its high uh, absorption coefficient. So that's why here. Uh, we're interested in this material and we want to substitute the indium, since it's rare and really expensive, with uh, aluminium, which is uh, really cheap and abundant, in, uh, especially in Quebec. So uh, that's why here, that's the, the main objective of the project. But uh, we want to do it at different compositions so we can study uh, the different uh, the different compositions. For example, here we have uh, 0, 5%, 10, and 20%. And we want to determine the best uh, aluminium uh, content uh, for the material. So here the synthesis is uh, really simple. Uh, in a basic order, in the precise order, we add uh, indium, aluminium, and sulfur. And then uh, we make a heating uh, treatment. We fight with wash, uh, we anneal at 500 degrees for three hours and then we prepare the film. Uh, the thickness is uh, a little bit uh, high, it's 20, uh, it's 20 microns. We want to lower it at uh, one micron if possible with different techniques so it's, up, it's in a process of optimization. Uh, the results were very good. Uh, first, we, for the X-ray diffraction we've got um, a higher crystallinity with uh, the aluminum content, which is really, really good. So we can see here uh, 0, 5, 10, and 20 percent. As the concentration of aluminum increased, the crystallinity increased. And we've got the same structure. We have, we have a tetragonal calcoperite structure as uh, its predecessor, the CIS. Uh, then for the UV uh, visible spectroscopy, we could see that the band gap energy value increases with aluminum uh, content. It's not linear. It's it's yet to be optimized with the from with the film preparation, but it's good. It's increasing with the aluminium, and the crystallite size increases also with the uh, aluminium content. We can see it for in the transmission electron microscopy. So we have very very good results. Interesting and promising. Uh, for next, uh, for future uh, analysis. We could see here uh, for the energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy that we have the four elements. We've had a little bit of oxygen and uh, it is also visible here in the X-ray. Uh, we have uh, indium oxide. Uh, this, this the whole synthesis was made uh, under argon uh, atmosphere, so in a glove box, so we could uh, uh, so we could uh, diminish the risks of oxidation, but unfortunately we have a little bit here. And uh, the results were very good, as I was saying, and uh, now we're waiting for the electrochemical analysis, uh, and uh, now and after to, to treat it in the electrochemical photovoltaic cell, to try the whole cell and to see the, to evaluate the efficiency. So that's it. Well, you got your P and you take your N and you make a P injunction. It's got an electric field that's built right in that gives it special function. Cause when you shine the light and the wavelengths right, you can gather some charges. And they'll do the work of maybe charge a battery or power of electric barges. Solar energy, solar energy. We can have our fun with the power from the sun using good old PV.